If you're new to VR headsets or new to the Quest 2, this video will give you some top tips on how to get the best out of your new gadget, including how to extend the battery life and also how to enable some cool features inside the headset. So let's get straight to it. You have no choice with the Quest 2 but to sign up using your Facebook account. So if you're concerned about privacy, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hop across to your privacy settings and update them. You can do this on the Oculus app by opening up the app, going to settings and then privacy settings. And you can turn on and off any privacy settings here. You can also use the app to browse and select games and experiences that you want to download. You don't have to stay in the headset. Once you've made your selection, the game will be queued and then it'll be downloaded the next time you use your headset. This next tip applies to everyone, but in particular to younger children. Children. You must make sure that you use the hand strap. When you're immersed in a game, it's very easy to forget yourself and let go of one of the hand controllers. I've even stupidly tried to put the hand controller down on a virtual table. I know. With children, when you're putting the headset on, make sure you put the headset on with their head near or over a couch. So then at least if it falls off or they let go of it, it's not gonna smash on the ground and it's gonna hit a soft surface. Now there's mixed opinion on the best way to put the headset on and the most comfortable way to wear it. I find that if you put the strap below the skull line at the back, that it's actually too uncomfortable. And after a short while, it makes your head ache. So what I do is I loosen the straps and then I hold the headset to my eyes and then pull the straps over my head and adjust the top strap and then the back strap. And all the time, adjust it slightly on your eyes to get the best image. And make sure your face is relaxed because this will change how the headset sits. The headset should obviously have a clear image and should be firm on your head, but not too tight. You can make further adjustments to the lenses by moving them in and out, and there are three positions to choose from. So select the position which gives you the sharpest image and is more comfortable on your eyes. One of the first cool features to turn on in the headset is called pass-through. When pass-through is activated, you can double tap the side of your headset and then the headset uses the external cameras and shows you your real surroundings. This saves you taking the headset on and off to re-establish your surroundings or to take a drink or if somebody's walked in the room and you want to start talking to them, you can still see them if you use pass-through and double tap on the side of your headset. So go to settings and then experimental features and select pass-through. When you set your guardian boundary, if there's one part of the boundary that is near a TV or near a wall or near an object that you could actually make contact with, bring your boundary in at least one foot away from the object because some games that involve long arm movements like punching or sword action may mean that you'll punch through the boundary and hit the wall or the TV before the guardian boundary warning appears. One other really useful feature in the headset which keeps you safe within your guardian boundary is called glanceable boundary. And when this is selected, the outline of your floor boundary will appear as you look down. So go to settings and guardian and then scroll down to glanceable boundary and turn it on. The next cool feature to enable in the headset is hand tracking and this allows you to replace your controllers with your actual hands. So go to settings select device and then hands and controllers and then select and turn on hand tracking and also auto select hand control when you put the controllers down. This won't work on every game and experience because sometimes you do need your hand controllers but it is another fun way to use your Quest 2. You can also use your Quest 2 headset just to simply browse the internet and you can do that by selecting the browser option here. And if you go on YouTube and search for some VR experiences there are some incredible immersive experiences especially from the likes of National Geographic and they're well worth checking out. There are two buttons that you need to be familiar with on your hand controllers, one on the right controller and one on the left controller. On on the right hand controller there's the oculus button and if you click this once this will bring up your universal control panel where you can quit the app or make other changes in the main menu if you hold it down it then resets the view of the main screen in front of you so if you want to stand in a different position you then press this button and hold it down and the screen will reappear in front of you on the left controller is a menu button 
which brings up a menu in certain games. Remember that all the games and experiences that you can download for the Oculus Quest 2 are rated with a comfort rating. So if you suffer with motion sickness, then stick with games that have a rating of comfortable or moderate. And another tip here when it comes to buying games, remember that Oculus have a 14 day refund policy. So if there are any games that make you feel sick, as long as you haven't played them for more than two hours, they will offer you a no questions asked refund. With the Quest 2, you can also cast to your phone so others can watch your gameplay. So from the main menu, select the arrow here and then select cast, and then select cast to Oculus app and then next. Now in the app, select the headset icon and then select your phone and then select start casting. And when you cast to your phone, you will also have other options to help the person if it's their first time using the headset. So you can toggle between watch and guide and with guide on, the person on the iPhone can then turn on the pass through feature remotely and they can also remotely select games and apps for them to try. If you want to take a photo or a video of your gameplay, then first click the Oculus button to bring up the universal menu. Now click on the large arrow sharing icon and then click on start a recording or take a photo. You can view your photos and videos here underneath the record icons. To access all of your saved apps and games, you can click on the multi-square icon from the universal control menu. And to select something, you click the trigger and to scroll up and down, you hold the trigger in and then move your controller up and down. In the main universal control menu, you have this amazing virtual environment. And the really cool thing is, is that there are a number of environments to choose from. And you could do that here by going to settings and then selecting virtual environment. This next tip is really simple but really important and that is to buy a lens cloth. Your lenses will get grease marks on them either from your forehead, from your hair or from your fingers and it will affect your image quality and it will make the images look out of focus. Clean them with a microfiber lens cloth before each use to get optimum clarity. If you're playing on your own, the Oculus Quest 2 offers around two hours gameplay on a single charge. This is an ample amount of time if you're playing on your own but if you're playing in a group then you're going to want to extend your battery life to play for a lot longer. You can do this on a budget by simply strapping a power bank to the headset strap and then plugging in a USB to USB-C cable which will trickle charge the headset while you play. The one shown here is an Anker 5200 milliamp hour power bank but you can now get one that's a similar size but it has a capacity of 10,000 milliamp hour and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Also if you don't need to use your Wi-Fi and the game that you want to play is already downloaded to your headset then you can switch off Wi-Fi and save battery that way as well. So go to settings and then quick action and then on the Wi-Fi section, toggle your Wi-Fi to off. If you found these tips useful, then please give this video a thumbs up. And if you want more tips on 360 and VR, then please consider subscribing. My name's Rich, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.